You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to Sports Comas Pelican Post Game Report on PRO Media Network. Welcome aboard, everybody, on this special, special podcast. It is our trade special podcast, of course. We're going to be covering the new trade the Pelicans just rolled out in other rumors trade issues rumors building up to the february i think it's the february the 8th deadline on the trade deadline so we'll be covering that today's podcast 144 on our trade special thursday february the 1st 2018 so like always thank you for joining us today on the pelican post game report trade special that is a round of applause for you for joining us and your support. I'm Big Q hosting and the co-host tonight with me in-house is DC. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm ready to talk about this special delivery we got. <laughs> a special delivery, huh? Yeah, that deep dish pizza coming on down from Chicago. <laughs> Foreign deep dish pizza. <laughs> Pelicans made a move if you hadn't already heard yet, people. They've made a trade, a much needed trade. Uh, to try to add some scoring oomph to this team. And they're currently on a two-game slide, uh, looking very bad. So Dale Demps got on the phone. Of course, he's known as Dealer Dale and got to dealing. And, boy, was he! I, I guarantee he was in his office burning up the lines trying to get this deal done. Of course, <laughs> it fell apart a couple of days ago because the Pelicans didn't want to pick up the tw- the $2.5 million uh I think, what is it? The exercise, the option on his $2.5 million deal. Of course, he had the power to be later trade. If they didn't pick it up, he did kill the trade. And then the Pelicans say, you know what? After going talk to the real money people, we're going to have to pick up this here uh, deal and make it happen. And they got Mr. Nikolai Miritich, who comes over from the Chicago Bulls. But in the trade, the, the Pelicans sent... Omer Asik's horrible contract, Woo. his horrible garbage time contract <laughs> that Dale Demp signed a few years ago. Remember Dale Demp, and we're going to get into this. Uh, Demp sent a first round draft pick to Houston to get Omer Asik, and then a few years later, end up trading him with a first round draft pick. Wow. Uh, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about yeah, that because we're not going to let you off the hook for that. First round draft picks. Huh? We were two, two first round draft picks, obviously, because we're not going to do nothing with them. But Miritich comes in, and all it cost us was a 2018 first-round draft pick, Amir Asik's horrible contract. They threw in Jameer Nelson and Tony Allen to the deal. And for the deal to work for Chicago, all the thing they had to do was cut one person (laughs) who the Pelicans sent to Chicago last year, Quincy Pondexter, for a second-round draft pick. (laughs) Who uh, the, the Pelicans just can't keep Quincy, stop man. messing over Quincy Pondexter. Man. He sent them to Chicago. He finally got healthy <laughs> and started playing a little bit. Quincy started talking about their medical staff. He's like, "We're gonna fix you." And the next day, you know, I ain't got no job. They had cut Quincy Pondexter. Chicago did that is to make the trade go on. So uh, we're gonna talk about that today on uh, today's show. We also have a few other things we're gonna break down on the rundown of today's show. We're going to talk about Meritix's contribution. What could he bring to the Pelicans uh, as if you uh, didn't know? Uh, also, we're going to cover other rumors that circulating. More moves on the way. Could be. There are rumors involving Greg Monroe, the center slash power forward, who was just recently bought out bought his, uh, bought out by the Phoenix Suns. He's an hour free agent, unrestricted free agent. We're going to consider and talk about uh, Greg Monroe. Is it a possibility? Tyreek Evans rumors. That's right. You heard it right. Tyreek Evans, former Pelican. Tyreek Evans, once again, 
<sighs> is involved in uh, 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 something dealing with New Orleans. I just uh, hey, I, I don't make it up. I just talk about. We got a revolving door run. Pretty much. And then we're going to talk about since the move, the Meritage move, who will be sincerely affected by Meritage coming in? Perhaps Solomon Hill. Meritage makes 12.5 or whatever it is, that option. What does that mean to Solomon Hill? Will he be a long stay on this team? I mean, you can't. How you going to cut him? Solomon so, Hill is, is old. My, well, I'll tell you what. Probably we'll, upward we'll, of 20 million dollars. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take Solomon Hill when he gets healthy and trade our 2019 first round draft pick. <laughs> and we'll get somebody else. That seems to be the method. And also, uh, thoughts about the trade oh, dealing man. around that and, and what, in seeing that we lost so, you know, some of the depth, Jameer Nelson is now gone. Tony Allen is now gone. Does that open up the door for Mike James, finally, who played Mike James. last game and made two points? Finally, Elvin Gentry finally played the damn man. DeAndre Liggins' time is starting to increase. Does that mean some of these young pieces are getting an opportunity to kind of uh, uh, kind of see show what they can do, so to speak? So that's the rundown on today's show. Podcast 144 DC. Let's get right on into it. Like we said before, the deal involving uh, since uh, we get Miritich. That's all we get with Miritich. They give up Jameer Nelson, Omer Asik, and Tony Allen. Of course, Tony Allen, they said it was going to re- release him. Chicago, they're going to keep Jameer Nelson. And they hold that horrible contract. And in, in the first round draft pick, of course, the Pelicans uh, give up, which is uh, my thoughts. What are your thoughts on this trade? What do you think about this trade? Well, uh, bearing the circumstances, Fidel Demps and Alvin Gentry, this is a phenomenal trade. Because <laughs> this will probably save their jobs. Uh, Long term, sure. I'm not so sure how to feel about it because uh, you know how we talked last time when uh, DeMarcus Cousins went down. I missed the last two shows, but my my take was to try and maximize your future. I don't see how this trade does that by giving away a, a, a protected 10th round, I mean, first round draft pick, the number 10 pick, I believe. So you get that away, and which is a deep draft, and you get a guy that you have basically for two years. Let's say he don't, I mean, we not, we not the Lakers. Like we not, uh, Boston. We, we ain't no pre premier team. Let's say this guy don't even want to stay with us. And he decides to leave, even though we want him. Or somebody offers him a ton of money. Then we look back on this and what did we get? We basically got from up under Mira Ashik's contract after we sat on it for three years. Why, why wouldn't Ben make a trade like this? Well, according to what ESPN is breaking down, they released some information on the parameters of the deal. And according to what they're reporting, $12.5 million of Nik- Nikolai Meritich's contract now has New Orleans's, at New Orleans, the Pelicans, at a $1.6 million below the luxury tax, below, not above, and $2.2 million below the hard cap. So the Pelicans are in good shape as far as the cap is concerned. They also... Uh, after this deal, they have room to sign two more players to prorated medium exceptions, which is we'll get into the Greg Monroe p- particular signing and perhaps another player uh, signing. Also, some more information about it is New Orleans creates a $1.5 million and a $1.4 million trade exception with the trade. The Pelicans also have a $3.5 million and a $2.1 million trade exception and the $2.5 million disabled player exception. So they still got a few exceptions that they can use to their benefit because of all of the injuries and all of the foolishness that's been happening Man. with the team. So a lot of stuff in that. Uh, I feel like we need to take some of that money and spend it on a new uh, medical staff, huh? Uh, <laughs> Well, man, we got the whole hospital the staff. Oshner is the medical uh, team that take care of Pelicans. Nah, I'm, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about all these other people, you know, like the guy that came over from uh, from the Saints. <laughs> oh, <laughs> After man. he messed up Delvin Bro's uh, foot. Yes. And he just came on over here to the Pelicans and act like nothing that happened. <laughs> yeah, and then we got a guy like Alexis Jinka who's been, I mean, this – I don't remember the last time. I don't even know how his jump shot looked no more. Right knee injury. This man been hurt the whole time he's been signed to us. From right about about knee. two years. And then they reevaluated him. He needed more time. Of course, you know, and then there's Solomon Hill, left hamstring tear. Then Frank Jackson finally is, is getting ready to uh, 
come help the off that right what? foot fracture. He's finally coming back. We finally gonna see what our rookie. I guess that's why well, we traded send- our draft pick away because we ain't like we do nothing with him anyway. Well, that's a part that that's absolutely got some truth to it now. Frank I don't Jackson know who we probably drafted after G-Man, uh, Andy Davis and uh, Darius Miller. I don't. <laughs> I pretty much don't know who we drafted after. They two. don't care about draft picks around here, buddy. No doubt about it. Uh, if you package it like what you is, but. You you saying uh, I, I I give my take on it DC I, I I think pretty much this is something that they need to do with Meritage you know they absolutely need the punch they need that I don't agree with the team as far as them sending uh, a first round draft pick but there was no way no one would take the assets that New Orleans has they just ugly assets for nothing now Meritage on the year. Right now, he averages about almost uh, six point eight, which is about seventeen points a game, six and a half rebounds a game. Uh, right now, on his career, he averages about eleven point four. So he's having a pretty good season uh, for the Bulls. Before he had that situation where Clinton, where, where uh, Bobby Portis basically broke his face right. when he fell out. Well, now, I now, wonder why that happened. Uh, they got into it. They got a little too chippy, yeah. and Bobby Portis went to his car and got a sledgehammer and must have hit him with it. Because yeah, uh, it was called it was called his fist. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, he's been with the Bulls for the past four seasons, and his numbers have increased except for that third year when he suffered some injuries. Played on uh, uh, his numbers dropped actually by a point or so. But this this year he was actually coming out playing pretty good. He's six foot ten. He's two hundred and sixty pounds. A lot of people think that he's wow. he can play the small forward position, but Miritich. As the he's ability. played the small forward position. He did play the he small forward. He looked like Ryan there. Anderson out there, you know, big old, tall, linky, slow, small forward. We didn't think Mary. He shoot your eyes out, man. He's right. and he's a sneaky, uh, sneaky good facilitator too. Right, he's about thirty six percent shooting from the three point line, according to his, uh, his statistics, his career statistics. That is about thirty six percent shooting from three. Well, anyway, the Pelicans get this guy. They bring him in. Um, Looking at the next group of questions dealing with it, what kind of contributions could we use? Could could be uh, the, what kind of contribution could Meritage bring to this team? Where would he? Where would his natural position be? Will you still keep Anthony Davis at four, at the five, and move Meritage at the four? I mean, what would the what would a uh, starting lineup look with Meritage in it to you? Well, that's pretty much a crapshoot when you're talking about Alvin Gentry. So I'm not gonna try to think with his brain. <laughs> Small um, ball, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alvin, well, like I told you, Alvin is going to put AD at, at the five and Mirage is going to be at the four. Mm-hmm. We got Etwan Moore up there. You know, uh, Smallish Etwan Moore right, at the small forward right. position. Drew Holiday and uh, Rondo. That's going to be stuck on But if I, uh, let's say, was running the team, I would sign Greg Monroe. I mean, he can't command a lot of money, he just got a contract brought up. I would sign him, let him be our starting center, put AD back at power forward, have Meritage from time to time play small forward or come in at power forward in natural position, and run the lineup the way that it's been, uh, minus each one more, have him come off the bench. I'll possibly start some games if we're going to run a small ball lineup. So I would definitely hope it would make it more flexible so we can run different matchups and different lineups pertaining to who we're playing. That would be the smart thing to do. But I think Alvin Jr. is pretty much going to start him and have AD at the five. I, I, I agree with you. I think until they figure out what to do with Meritage, I, I, I think Meritage will probably come off. I think he actually will come off the bench, you know, until they figure well, out what to do with him. It's too big of a uh, you know, I guess that you think they're going to I mean, at first, but until he up? learns something. I mean, me personally, I like to look like you saying AD at five, even though Anthony Davis does not like to play the five position. I think it's a good it's a good lineup to run against certain teams. Certain teams. If we're right. playing like uh, Sacramento, but you don't we have, saw how Zach Randolph But you don't have was. an establishment center anymore. When you got rid of Amir Asik, that's all you have. That's I mean, you why don't have we need to sign else. Greg Monroe. You need him to be a body at least if he can't be nothing else. I think he still has the potential to produce offensively and decently defensively. We know he's not the best defender, but he's a real good rebounder. And he can get you some points offensively. So you get a guy like that to be a body because we don't want AD taking all that punishment, man. We're going to have him down and out just like DeMarcus Cousins. That would be foolish. So if they continue to run AD at the five, put Meritage at the, at the four, and we don't sign a guy that we can have a body to at least switch it around or at least have a guy like we had in Ashik that could just take some punishment when you play a team like Sacramento with a real physical big guy, then, I mean, we're fooling ourselves, man, and all this will be for nothing because 
at the end of the season, AD's probably going to be all beat up. I look at it the fact that, you know, the, the whole Amir Asik debacle, that's what I call it. First of all, it, this is the, a little storyline on it before we go to break here. And we got about a few, about a minute before we go into our first break. But before we go to break, let me chime this out to you guys. They traded for Amir Asik July the 15th, 2014. They traded with Houston as a part of a three team trade. They sent Melvin Eli to Washington. Houston then traded Amir Cosby and a $1.5 million to New Orleans. New Orleans traded Trevor Ariza, Alonzo G, a 2015 first round pick, and Scotty Hobson to Houston to acquire Amir Asik. That was on July the 5th, 2014. It is February the 1st, 2018. The trade went down and and involve the first round pick again. That's two picks for Amir Isaac. I didn't know he was that valuable. We're going to talk about that foolishness on the other side of the break, among other issues and rumors with trades and how does this impact other players. So listen to the Pelican post game report. Trade show. Come on back, holler at Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We off air talking about the ridiculousness of some of the trades that uh, G, the GM dealer Dale Dimps, Mr. Lionel Jefferson himself, has been, I haven't called him that in a while, Mr. Lionel Jefferson, the second Lionel Jefferson. Uh, just get a picture of him and, Je- and Lionel Jefferson and the second one, put it together, you see what I'm talking about. The kind of trades that he pulled off, just in particular, this trade dealing with Amir Asik, almost four years since they traded for a first round draft pick cash and other players, Trevor Z- uh, Ariza to Houston to acquire the services of Amir Asik only to ship him back to where he earned his money in Chicago. What a first round draft pick. And, and we probably get it. was uh, Clint Capella probably was that draft pick <laughs> and they still got Trevor Ariza over oh, there giving them quality. Man, minutes, I don't know man. what that draft pick was. We got to do some research oh, on man. that for a future show to know who that pick was, but I'm pretty sure they just upset us. Anyway, looking forward, going forward into the show, Amir Asik's deal, I mean, of course, he makes $11.2 million a year. That's amazing to me. Almost $11 million. It says ten point five, but it's about $11-something million, almost $11 million a year if you average all his years together. It's eleven point five million uh, for the five-year, $60-something million deal that he signed originally back in 2015, 2016 season. 
public service and my announcement going out to all the free agents for the NBA. We love to give away money. <laughs> Come stand in line and get you a check. Man, wow. But he Why we can't draw no free agents, man? We give away money freely. I, I just don't I just don't agree with we the just method. Just throw it away. We just throw it down I, the drain. I just don't agree with the method. I'm not you know, Amir Asik, the only way we were gonna get rid of that, this is just proof positive that this was a major mistake. You shipping him out with draft picks. Now, if this doesn't work, and I'm not gonna be gloomy Gus here, but if this situation, all these trades and moves that they're trying to piecemeal together, doesn't work, and a team fails or flusters, then it, when they fire Dale Demps, if they don't make the playoffs, they would definitely remove El Gentry. The next general manager that comes behind him will have oh, absolutely boy. nothing to work with because he's gonna be capped. He's gonna be strapped with all these massive contracts. And, he, and then next year, the Pelicans are definitely going to go over the uh, – they're going to be one of the – they're already one of the top six or seven teams as far as salary goes right now. I mean, it's just astronomical, the amount of numbers, the, the money that they're paying for these guys. That's, the, not that's them Luminomics, baby. But this, this, this is the funny <laughs> part about it, though. If you look at what the teams like San Antonio are, are the best thing I can say about OKC – who they who they're playing against coming up on Friday? OKC built their team before Russell Westbrook left. Of course, they got Paul George there and uh, Carmelo Anthony there now. But prior to that, they were the guys that built the team through the draft with guys like Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, yeah, and they James they Harden. Keep none of them. Steve, well, they, except they made, Russ. Well, they made a mistake on the I James Harden all those thing. Guys go they through. made a mistake. They had Sergio Baca there, Stephen Hunter. Uh, Reggie, uh, Reggie, what's the guy from uh, Detroit? What's his name? Reggie Jackson. Reggie, uh, yeah, they had Reggie was. Jackson. So they had Reggie Jackson. Jeremy was Lamb was another really guy. They, they drafted right the little point guard that they traded to Chicago, uh, who backs up uh, Chris Dunn. He's hurt right now. I can't think of his name. But anyway, they have an excellent. Talking about Grant? No, it's another little guy. But they got an excellent way of picking young talent to bring it to your team. Drafting guys, being smart with your draft picks drafting and building your team to the draft as opposed to doing a Dale Demps method which is to overpay for yeah, veterans. Yeah, Enos too. I and, forgot about him. Oh, uh, that's right. I also had Enos Canada. that he he's dropped. Balling it, out it, it, go, York, it goes over and over and over and over and over and over. You know, they, they just pick, they know how to get the right people in place. And it's not hard. Only thing you have to do is go hire their guy, the second guy underneath the guy that's making the moves and bring him down here and help him, have him to help you in your scouting department. Oh, no, y'all not doing any of this right. <laughs> but it's the, the, right. It's, you, you're not you're not developing in talent, and, and you don't hit on the number one unless he falls into your lap uh, via Chris Paul, via Anthony Davis. Even when they did the set, they had two picks in the initial year when Anthony Davis came out. They had two first round draft picks, one overall in the second pick. They drafted Anthony Davis. Then the, later on, they got Austin Rivers. They gave up on Austin Rivers way too early, in my estimation. But that's just what they do, you know. So. Uh, with with that said, let's let's move forward. Just 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 let that be on the record that this was a major disaster. This whole Amir Isaac thing. The next major contractual disaster that's on the books is Solomon Hill, and we'll get into that later on in the show. But DC, let's move into the the other rumors circulating around the Pelicans. Greg Monroe. There's a rumors circulating about uh, Greg Monroe. Of course, we know he was bought out of his contract by Phoenix. After being traded from Milwaukee to Phoenix, then he didn't have a place there. He agreed to a buyout. It's been talked for the last two or three years that they've been, been trying to whispers, about Greg whispers of Greg Monroe, Greg Monroe finally coming home and playing for his hometown Pelicans. And it it has not got it's. I, mean, I must say that the situations are lining up right now where Greg Monroe could make that a reality. The only they have a few other teams that's out there. Like Boston, that that's that definitely has more money to throw at him, but not in a starting capacity. The Pelicans actually can say, "Listen, we can bring you in here. Just give us, a, you know, accept our deal, come play for us. You can be starting in front of your hometown team. That's very interesting." Right. According to some sources, it says that that's a very that's a significant uh, they, that the Pelicans have gained significant momentum in pursuit of Monroe, who has a interest in playing for this team. Because of its uh, location to you know being in its hometown, right? And the fact they got a massive hole at the center position. What yeah. do you think about this rumor? I think it's a perfect fit, man. And I think the rumor is definitely true. I mean, you've been hearing it for so long with this that old while. that old saying, "Where there's smoke, there's fire," and all that. Right. You've been hearing this rumor for like you said about three or four years. Greg Monroe is from the West Bank. Well, went to high school in Helen Cox. He was a phenom in the city. Uh, everybody would welcome him with open arms. 
They know his situation for his career. He had a good little stretch, and he's kind of on a downturn. I hadn't found I, the right team. He was with Detroit yeah. for that while. You know, he played with Drummond and all that. Hadn't found the right system. He was looking pretty good in Detroit. Then they moved around, but yeah, he might think actually he, work. I here. think he'll look real good here, and he'll have yeah. he'll have support. And I think that's all that guy needs. He just needs some support. Um, I think his confidence has been broken through what he's, what he's been through in his career. He's he's fairly healthy. He's not injured, and that's saying a lot for a big guy. I think he could come in and be more than just a body, but even if he was at least just a body, it still improves our team tremendously because we just need another big man that desperately. So I love to see Greg Monroe here, man, and I think if he came here, he'd go visit his uh, Helen Cox and remember a lot of that stuff. You're around your old coach, your family, and different stuff like that, man. Anybody plays better in that type of atmosphere. I think you're absolutely right, man. I think it'll be a nice move. And looking at some stuff on Greg Monroe, he started 401 of his 457 NBA games. Uh, his playing time greatly went down. He's average, after averaging 22 points in three, uh, 22 minutes over the past two seasons. As a free agent approaches, he's 27 years old. He has played a lot of meaningful games, but he hasn't. he's not a worn-out veteran. As a starter, he has pretty decent minutes. DC averaged four, four, 14 and a half, nine rebounds a game over the over uh, per game pretty over those good. six seasons. That's not bad. As pretty a starter, good. those are starter numbers now. And Still pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, of course, they have two open spots after the Miritich deal uh, to add, add Greg Monroe. Of course, the only question is of money. Will he take a significant reduction to play for us, or will he chase the money with Boston? Now, not just the money, but Boston is clearly a better team, more established team. You know, they might say, look, uh, even though we got Baines playing at center, we can definitely use you next to L. Hawford. And then you have L. Hawford. I mean, it's attractive, nonetheless, because I'm pretty sure it looks good to play for your hometown team, but Boston. You have an op- a- a- opportunity to really compete. The Pelicans are kind of kind of struggling around. They're gonna have to basically do everything we was doing, learning how to play together. Finally, before they went that seven to eight winning games, you know, the winning right. seven of eight, right? Going that four game winning streak. Guess what? We got to build all, chemistry all, all over, over again. again. Yeah. So and then the problem it's been is the story of our team though. all over again. <laughs> the whole Dell uh, Demps. Gentry era. Well, it is it, it, you know it's de- imploded. I mean, you, with Demarcus yeah. Cousins, that's a massive hole right there. And then when he went down, that sh- severely showed you how the stars, Demarcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, has been carrying this team bench wise because they're guard too guard heavy. Drew Holiday too. Way too many guards and not enough bigs. And it was proof positive. We talked about with Zach Randolph when Zach Randolph, like David Wesley said on the on the telecast. That it was a bull in the China shot. <laughs> <laughs> he was knocking guys around all kind of ways, and they couldn't stop him. That should have showed them, hey, man, we need to find some guys with some girth down there that can do some bullet ball, that can go and snatch up rebounds and stuff like that. Remember, that team so had 20-plus 20, 20 second half, uh, a second-chance shots Zach, on the Zach team. Randolph said in his neighborhood, he they bully the bullies. <laughs> so <laughs> he ain't the type of guy. Yeah, obviously, his neighborhood. It's pretty it, it, rough. It, right. It's pretty bad that he brought it right to the Pelicans' floor. I, I so. think Greg Monroe is uh, pretty much a lot to, to come here. Uh, Boston, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. I think if he does go to Boston, I don't think he get a lot of minutes. I'm, I don't think that's what he's looking for. I think he's looking for a situation where he can uh, get some time and prove his work and get back to the caliber of player that he was. And I don't see him being able to do that in Boston. I know that might be telling him this or that. He knows he goes over there. He's pretty much going to be the third guy. Coming here, he could probably be a starter. And you, you can uh, at least show what you work to be able to make some money on a free agent market on a free agent market at the end of the year. This is true. This is very true. And um, like I said, it, it's, it, he can go. It can go either way here. But if the Pelicans, well, he can love it and stay and sign for not much of you know well, big contract. Well, let, let, well, let's look at. Let's say, for instance, just to say that that he opts to go to Boston. What are uh, options behind Greg Monroe if he says, you know what, I'll see you guys in the free agent spirit for right now, let me go and chase this ring with Boston. And says, no, what are your options? Let's help Let's help, let's help. help out Dealer Dale and give him some options behind uh, Greg Monroe. I, for one, say Terrence Jones. 
a guy that's familiar with your system, a guy that can score. Of course, he's not a center, but he could be one of those other players, that one of the two spots you can bring in. Definitely gives you a big that can score off the bench. And you can bring him in and move him in certain packages. Of course, I still say the Pelicans need to find a center, too, outside of if they can't land, land Greg Monroe. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I like Terrence, man, but uh, with them just getting – Meritage, I, I don't, I don't see it. Like uh, we got three guys. I mean, that means uh, you gotta get rid of Sheik Diallo, uh, do something with him. Sheik Diallo, sign. they already got rid of Sheik Diallo. They just don't know it. He just sits on the, on the bench and wears. The shit. <laughs> I, you know, I guarantee. But that he, he's, after he's the game, still on the books, man. I guarantee. So. You, after the game, you know what Elvin Gentry do? After everybody is left and it's just Sheik Diallo and Elvin Gentry in the locker room, he said, "Come on to my office." He goes into his office to say, "Go, you from? Go out there and finish sweeping up the court while everybody." Oh come. man! So he can earn me. his paycheck. That's messed up, bro. <laughs> but uh, no, my, I'm saying, I like you, Diallo. What I I'm like you, Diallo, is, too. I mean, he ain't doing nothing because but the you, man you gonna won't be, play him. You're gonna be stacked at one position, man. We desperately need a center. Terrence Jones can't do that. Uh, I like Terrence Jones as a player. I would like to sign him. All but right, but give me, I just don't see us doing that without getting a, a center. Okay, give me one center quickly. Who you think that'll be available that can fit that billing if if Greg Monroe, the moose as they call him, chooses to go to Boston? You out of luck. Ain't none. <laughs> that's Lopez. You just you just sign somebody that's a body. That's uh, the Lakers frustrated Lopez that said that he's on Man, that. He's, How about he's Julius got, Randle? He's, he's got a lot of money. Uh, Julius Randle. We up can't there. make the Julius Randle trade with them people. What are we gonna give them? Chick Diallo. We had to we had to get uh, Julius we'll get Randall Chic Diallo for Julius Randall. Yes, man, them people be out their mind if they <laughs> sign that deal. We just gave away our first round draft pick. That would have been a way to get. We Julius ain't give away Randall. all of them. We still got the 2019 draft pick. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is satire, people. But this is the kind of foolishness that when you have. Let me tell you something. When you have bad contracts like that. And you have these. I mean, that's absolutely a horrible contract for Amir Asik. You have yeah, this I guy. Should, I ain't never. Why don't you mention Solomon Hill? I, I, you know what? Bruh. Solomon's on the docks. He's next up to get the gavel. Because Solomon Hill is a guy, and make, we're going to get to that next topic next. Make Alexis Jinks look like, uh, you know, chump change. He's the next bad contract up, no doubt about That's it. That's what, $6, Miritich, $7 million for, for with, nothing? With Miritich coming in, Solomon Hill now makes $12 million, uh, what is it, 11 almost $12 million a year now annually. Right. So with a Miritich coming in here with this extra optionary money, you're going to pay two guys – $12 million off the bench. I know Miritich might start, but you're still going to play Solomon Hill that kind of money? I doubt. No, I think Solomon Hill, we're going to, you know what, let's hold that topic. Let's go finish our rumors <laughs> first. Rumors on Tyreek Evans. That's the story that came out that the Pelicans were interested in Tyreek Evans. The same guy yes, that they signed and they traded away to Sacramento uh, not too long ago. I think it was last year, matter of fact. We they traded well. him away to Sacramento and now they want him back. Now he makes $3 million a year, which is not that bad. Uh, compared to the contract that he signed, a prove it deal with the Memphis Grizzlies, which he's averaging over 18 points a game. That he's pretty good in that I, system. I actually think they're trying to get rid of him because they're like, dude, what are you doing? We want to lose these games. Like, what are you doing out there playing all hard? So, what, what do they do? Do, the, do is it real? If it, do you think about this rumor? Is it, I mean, is it I, I would like. Would you take Tyreek Evans? I would like. Right now? I would like to have Tyreek Evans back, but I say no, man, because I mean. You know what this guy is, and obviously, for whatever reason, you parted ways with him. Like, stick to your decision. Don't give up an asset, another asset, to get a guy back that you could have had already. I mean, it just you're just making you look stupider. Even if you can get him back and he could come ball out, but that's another draft pick gone that you pretty much you, you, you could have had him. He's covered. He, I'm sure he would have stayed here for three million dollars. He's currently right now. Making he's averaging 19 and a half points a game with five assists and five rebounds, so he's having an excellent year for Memphis. But bear in mind, Mike Conley's not there. Uh, Gasol is having an off year. They got a lot of young pieces. The coaches was was fired, so they got a backup coach there. They're in total rebuild mode. They've done what Sacramento did. I don't. They went to a youth mode concept, and Tyreek does not fit that block. So. He's, he could he could help you, but I just it just it's like what are we doing? I, I don't care. Why are you man. talking to Tyreek Evans here? if you can get wins and you can put up 19 points 
in the NBA. I would trade something. I would trade Solomon Hill for Tyreek Evans. Okay, I would too. But why? Why would? Why would Memphis take that? Memphis wouldn't take that. Exactly. Nobody would. Nobody would take, would take that. Right. So it's like I would too. What? what you want Solomon Hill? So like we wouldn't even have to <laughs> negotiate. It, it, well, Evans is saying though he wants to be traded to a contender. So uh, obviously he doesn't. I don't think the Pelicans are could be considered contenders. I know I the Pelicans. He might, he might be trying to sneak, sneak over there to Cleveland. If right, right, like that, that that's the talk. Is Cleveland's yeah. the talk? Boston is the talk. Very as low, well. very low money. And right. Cleveland definitely can. They use, could definitely use Tyreek. Uh, a, a defensive point guard like Tyreek. And, and, and the thing about Tyreek Evans is too is that the Cleveland Cavaliers for the last they two years they always compare them to LeBron. Too. Have they have been asking about Tyreek Evans, but this year he has the, the contract, the three million. They actually make it work. That's enough for, for Tyreek. Let's move into our next topic. Bye, Derek About Rose. Solomon Hill. Yeah, pretty much. About Solomon Hill. Bye, everybody. <laughs> you don't talk about that. But anyway, so, let's move into Solomon Hill discussion. With the Miritich trade, everybody in New Orleans are happy to see Miritich, a guy that's coming in. He's, he's, he's averaging 17, almost 17 points a game, rebounding six and a half boards a game. Everybody high-fiving him except for Solomon Hill. Because I think this is this will probably be he knows. He, this trade here is this ain't a one hitter quitter deal. Wait, here. what what is Solomon Hill's number? I don't even much remember because I don't remember I, I, I Ain't Solomon it Hill number forty four? <laughs> I think it's I no, I don't think it's forty four. But anyway, uh both forgot Solomon Hill's number. His number is actually, uh, I don't know. It's a His Solomon number Hill's. is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Because he doesn't freaking oh, play. Yeah, His number is zero points per game. Solomon Hill makes almost 12, 11.7, almost $12 million. Though, dollars. Yeah. We got those numbers. You know that. Okay, so, yeah. he, so saying that, he makes $12 million. This guy option kicks in for next year. It'll be 12.5. So that's two mm. guys making $12 million. I mean, I don't realistically see, and not to throw the DeMarcus Cousin chip in there, because they are going to resign DeMarcus Cousin. No doubt. So who loses in this deal? Do we still keep Solomon, Old Man Hill, and over Meritage? What's your thoughts on it? Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you can justify this. If Meritage wants to stay, he wants to come back. I mean, we got to pay the guy. Well, that'll be the show, y'all. Thank y'all for listening to a special Sports Coma Trade Edition as we break down the trade. Uh, please feel free to go to our Patreon page and donate to help the show. Join our social media family at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And look out for more video reports and audio reports, podcasts, and the like from the guys from Sports Coma. From DC and myself, Big Q. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, 
you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. <laughs> 